This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. In the first video I made in this series, I mentioned that I have some smart plugs from TP-Link. Today, I want to write a service that controls those. I have two of them. I have the HS100 and the HS110. They're both plugged in. One in here, one's in the living room. The only difference between them is the 110 has energy monitoring stuff built in. You're supposed to use the CASA app to control them. But let's see if we can build a service to do it instead. It's going to be very similar to the Hue service from the last video, so I'm just going to do it in Node again so I can copy and paste a lot of that code. It's also interesting to note that these devices have encryption. And I guess you're not supposed to do this. Uh, like, TP-Link don't want you to control them from anything outside of the, the CASA app. But people have reverse engineered the encryption. There are libraries available that will let you control them and it becomes a really easy thing to do. And there, there are blog posts about how people have reverse engineered the encryption which I'm not going to go into but it's an interesting read. I'm just going to set up a new node project here. And this is the library that we're going to use. Um, TP-Link Smart Home API. This controls uh, a lot of the plugs that they have. I'm not actually sure what the other ones are. I'll use Node 11 this time. Last time I used Node 8, uh, and somebody asked why. Not for any specific reason, I just misread the Docker Hub page on this, because the versions start at number 8, and then it goes to number 6, so it's like, ah, oh, 8 must be the latest. Turns out it's not, 11 is the latest. So we want to import or require TP-Link Smart Home API. So just looking at the, the documentation, um, you create a new client like that, and then you do client.getDevice and pass in the host, so the IP address of the plug. This returns a promise which resolves to a device which you can do get sysinfo and set power state on. That looks like all we need, to be honest. The the docs are, are huge, but let's just let's go with this and see how far we get. I'm just distracted by outside. They are using a small crane to build a medium crane so they can take down a big crane. I'm just wondering whether this would be better not as a class actually. Classes are just syntactic sugar over the top of prototypes anyway in JavaScript, but you can get a long way with just functions. Okay, so without the class syntax, we probably save a few lines of code here. Uh, we can have a function which takes a host, I guess, like the IP address. So there's get info and get sys info. Get info requests common plug details in a single request. Okay, get info just does more stuff. Let's use get info. I want to minimize the number of requests that I make to the plugs um, because I don't want to DDoS them. It's unclear exactly what this returns. Uh, this is when I resort to console.log. I'm going to make a DAO package again, like last time. So you've got um, the roots at the top, which interact with the DAO package, which interacts with the API package. I'm just going to hard code the, the device details here. Obviously, they should come from the device registry, but can do that later. Uh, and the one that's plugged in behind me is for all of my like AV equipment. Specifically, uh, a projector, one of the two that's up there at least. I, I still haven't got around to selling the, the old one. The AV receiver, the, the Freeview receiver, uh, and one plug turns those three things on. So we want to use this get state by host function in the TP-Link client but for every device that we have. So devices is the array. Um, we can do map on an array so that we apply the same function to every device. 
So let's assume this returns uh, an object representing the state of this plug. It'll be a promise so we can use async away everywhere. And then we're gonna do something here to apply state to device. Devices.map is gonna return an object which is the result of applying this mapping function to every element in the device's array. Given we've prefixed the function with async, it means it's gonna return a promise. So what we get is an array of promises here. And I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, what we can now do is promises.all and pass this array of promises into it. And this means it'll essentially do everything in parallel. So we're not gonna, if we say had five plugs that we wanted to get the state of, we're not gonna block on each one, we're gonna send all of the requests out. Uh, and this line will wait until all of them are finished. Sorry, this should be promised to all. It's not happy about TP-Link client line 11. I think actually this .get plug doesn't make any API calls. Maybe we can simplify the code. I'm just going to search for the function name in this repository. So yeah, there it is. Line 150 returns new plug so it instantiates an object. Now, let's just make sure that the constructor of that doesn't do anything either. No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, but this extends device. Kind of risky to rely on this always working this way, because obviously uh, it's a third-party library, it could be changed. This creates a new UDP and TCP connection. I wonder what they are. Network TCP connection. Okay, so this is how it's making the requests, I assume. But... It doesn't do anything in any of the constructors, which is good. I think we can get rid of that function and just do dot get plug each time. So you can see some of the energy use stuff there. That's an uh, an integer, it looks like, but let's cast that to a boolean. That should just work. Okay, the app can run now. Let's have the roots do something useful so we can test whether this works. All right, let's make some HTTP requests to it. Nice, okay, so it returns power false. I'm gonna use the CASA app to turn the power on. I've just heard it click on. Uh, and this time it returns true. The color's horrible there, but it does say power true. Amazing, okay, we've got a service that can make requests to all of the plugs that are defined in the, the devices array, get their state and then return it over uh, an endpoint. I wanted to spend the majority of this video on the energy monitoring side of this plug. The one thing my home automation system needs to do is tell me the state of devices. So it's great to be able to turn something on and off, but I want to be able to see what state it's currently in. So that's fine, it's really easy to do with things like the, the hue lights and the, the plug here. But what I can't do it with is the devices which are not smart devices. So specifically, the things which are plugged into this TP-Link plug, the projector, the AV receiver, and the Freeview box, they're not smart devices. They have just a normal infrared remote control, uh, and there's no other way to interact with them. And the, the, the longer-term plan here is I can put some infrared LEDs on a Raspberry Pi and control those, but there's no way to get feedback and understand whether the thing turned on or off. But... When it's turned on, it's going to consume energy, and the, this TP-Link plug can tell me how much energy the things are using. So I can use that data to infer whether the devices that are plugged into it are turned on or not. And to make it just slightly more interesting, I've got three things plugged into that TP-Link plug. There's like an extension lead plugged into it, uh, and I think that I can figure out which set of them are on based on the total energy consumption. First thing to do is to use the CASA app to figure out how much energy each device uses on its own. Right now it's using 1.32 watts. Uh, that's with the three things just in standby. If I turn the AV receiver on, how do I make this update? 43.5 watts. I don't know how stable it's going to be. 43.4, 45.7, 45.6. Alright, there's some variation here with the AV receiver. But it's around 45 watts. Okay, now the Freeview receiver. 15, 13, 17.8. 
uh, 18.6. I don't know why this doesn't update. You have to go backwards and forwards. Okay, it seems to have settled around 18 watts. The projector. I've turned that on. It'll take a while to warm up. Oh wow, this uses a lot of energy. We've got about 250 watts there. Okay, I've made a projector just to pattern. Um, oh, it's actually gone down. 230. Interesting. Okay, that's settled around 230 watts. Way higher than the others. The three things are very different in their energy consumption, which means it should be quite easy to deduce from the total energy consumption which one is on. So we've got the energy consumption of the three devices. Now, of course, any combination of these devices could be turned on at once. If we just label these as 1, 2, and 3 for the, the AV receiver, the free view box, and the projector, we could have anything from the empty set all the way up to all three of them being on at once. This resulting set is called the power set. So we're first going to want to write some code that takes uh, an array and gives us the power set of that array. So then we'll have an array with every combination of devices that could be turned on and we can just add up the energy consumption of each one individually to find out the total energy consumption for that combination. And then we loop through all of them and see which one is closest to the current energy consumption coming from the plug. And we use that to figure out which set of devices is turned on. Let's give it a go. I think at this point we want a domain package module, whatever they're called in JavaScript. I'm going to make a class called plug. So this is our standard plug. We also want a version that represents the HS110 that has the energy monitoring. Let's first just write the functions that we're going to need. So I mentioned the power set function. So it's going to be an array of arrays. Um, so it would return for one, two, three. You'd get the empty set. You'd get one, two, one, two, three, one, three, two, three, and one, two, three. So power set is going to start as an array with one thing. We can have the empty set as the first element. That's always going to be something in a power set. So this will iterate through all of the things in the input array. And for each thing in the input, we want to combine it with what's currently in the power set. So in our first iteration, we're going to get first element, which might be like 1 in the input array, if we, we use this example. And it's going to combine that with the empty set and add a new element with that to the, uh, the power set. So we want power set at position j combined with the input array at position i. So that's going to add 1 to the power set. So we have the empty set and we have 1. Um, then we're going to move on to 2, and it's going to combine 2 with the empty set. So we get uh, empty set 1 and 2. Then it's going to combine 2 with 1, so we get 1 and 2. And you can see it starts to build up uh, a set of arrays that look like this. Then we're going to get 3, it'll combine it with the empty set to get 3 on its own, it'll combine it with 1, it'll combine it with 2, then it'll combine it with 1, 2 to get 1, 2, 3. So that should give us a power set. That's the first building block that we need. The config that's passed into this constructor is just going to be the information from the device registry. And it has the attribute fields that we can just shove random stuff into that's specific to a service. Um, so config might look like this going to have attributes which can have devices which could be a map and this could be like projector what did that use 230 watts so that's kind of what we're working with um, we want to find all the combinations of the devices so we want to do get power set of what would that be config dot attributes dot devices but just the keys we then want to map all of those combinations to how much energy that they would use. Uh, this is going to take each element in the power set. So for example, the, the combination projector and free view and it's going to reduce that array into one number and that's just going to be the sum of how much power each thing individually uses so then we can add an object to this power map 
Not entirely sure where I'm going with this yet. So I've put the the wattage information into the actual devices. We then need to have the TP-Link client return the current power usage information. The DAO is then going to apply that to the object. Instead of just a, a plain JavaScript object, this can now be an instance of the class that we made. And instead of just assigning the new state to the device, let's add a apply state function. And in this, we can figure out what the current state is. I know that watts is a horrible name for this, and it should be power, because that's what it's measuring, but I've already used power to mean whether the thing is on or off, because a watt is, of course, a unit of power. So we've got mapped at watts, that's how much the uh, combination would use. We can subtract what it's currently using, and we want the one that's going to be closest to zero. Uh, so I guess we can just take the absolute value of this. So if we haven't found a closest yet, uh, if it's null, or if d is, is less than closest, then closest equals d. So once we've done that, uh, let's just console.log combination. You can see it's now printing an empty array, so presumably it thinks that nothing is turned on, which is correct, but it's probably just broken. Let's turn the free view player on. Oh, amazing, it works. So it now says the free view receiver is on. And if I turn two things on at once, free view receiver and AV receiver. Let's try them all just for completeness. If I turn the, the projector on. So it still just thinks two of them are on. N ah, now it just thinks the projector alone is on, which is not true. Still the case. I feel like as the projector's warming up, it's only using some of the total power it eventually gets to. It slowly ramps up. So there's this period in the middle where its current usage plus the other two roughly equal what the projector's normal full power usage would be. But hopefully if I do it again... There we go. So now it's warmed up it thinks all three are on. So there's this this period in between where it's not stable and the results are not reliable. I'll fix that problem if it actually becomes a, an issue in the future. But this is pretty cool. It, it knows which devices are on. I think the next immediate steps will be publishing this information somewhere more useful. But this has been fun to do. I'm glad this works. I've had this idea for a long time. This is the kind of use I want to get out of these smart home devices that the, they just don't give you by default. The CASA app can't do anything useful like this. It just tells me that it's using 43 watts. I'm like, great, okay. My code now turns that into some useful information that I, I can do something with. And the power set thing was kind of fun to think about. I didn't just know exactly how to do that off the top of my head. Uh, I had to take a while to think about that and figure out exactly how to iterate through the two arrays to get the right result. There are obviously other solutions to it as well. It's not the only way. Uh, to, to implement this. But this kind of problem solving is really fun uh, and it's a great way to learn. If you want to do more of it then I recommend checking out Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a problem solving website with a hands-on approach. They have a huge range of over 60 courses, they've added a load more since I last made a video, covering really quite interesting topics across maths, science and computer science like logic, number theory, group theory, mechanics, astronomy, machine learning and computer memory. Each course is interactive, beautifully illustrated, and the perfect way to get to grips with the subject. Please do try it out, you can sign up for free, and the first 200 people to click the link in the description will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Alright, I think that's it. Uh, I'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.